Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we got a letter that came in, a customer service. This one came in from Greg Hill. And he says, Don, after viewing eight of your instant video lessons, I decided to try out your swing. I am a huge guy, six foot ten. Whoa, six ten, that's, that's pretty tall. 250 pounds, 62 years old. I have played golf and taken lessons for the last 40 years, currently played to a 13 handicap. I was previously using a connected rotary swing with limited success. I figured with my long arms, why not try your swing? And then he's got, wow. I hit the ball nicely and high, at least five yards further with my irons and 20 yards further and straight with my driver. I simply firmed my grip up much more, swung into the catcher's mitt and up the tree in my backswing and let it fly on my downswing. I occasionally hit a few fat shots, but overall, I hit the ball very crisply with nice divots in front of the ball. Thanks so much. Anything else I should work on? Please give me some ideas on how to use your website. Thanks again, Don, for bringing back my golf game. P.S. I just started all of your DVDs and can't wait to view them. Again, Greg Hill. Okay, Greg, well, there's the way to use the website. You just said you bought the DVDs. And I, and I try to like to say to folks out here that, that these dailies, you really can't learn the PPGS swing here because... Basically, these dailies are where I'm just giving you some tips and some fine, some fine points to, to remember. And, and, and when I go to golf schools and, and I have people send in some dailies like this, many of the times what do they say is, man, that, that daily on this and this was really great because it reminded me. I had forgotten about that and I wasn't really focusing on it then. I had to get back to thinking about it. But if you really want to learn the, the PPGS swing, you have to buy the instruction, all of the instruction videos. Because first off, anybody that's been on PPGS knows that we have our own language. And then and with the language, we have our own terms and definitions. And, and as we know, we got the concept of, of, of a street. We got the white line in the middle, we got the curb on that side and the curb on that side. And basically the two point the, the basic all the basic theories in golf is is I'm on that side of the street and everybody else is on that side. And and and, and so if learning the PPGS is pretty much getting rid of and forgetting everything you learned from that side of the street and, and coming on this side. And you just can't truly learn it in the dailies. You have to get in there and read and listen to, uh, read the manual, the foundations manual, and listen to the videos. And probably the most critical one is, 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 our, is, is the ultimate alignment video, which is almost a two hour video. So right there is the number one thing you've done. But I want to talk about a point you brought in here that was really important. You said, after you said you were hitting it five yards further with the irons and 20 yards further with the, and straight with the driver, your next sentence was, I simply firmed my grip up much more, swung into the catcher's mitt and up the tree in my backswing and let it fly on my downswing. What is one of the number one things that anybody who comes to this site that we talk about, and if you read in the manual, we start out in the, and we do any of the total videos that cover everything in the swing, but especially the foundations manual, first thing I talk about is grip. And what's the number one thing I say about grip? A, we've all been told that the grip should be light. Hold the club like holding a baby bird in your hand. And, and, and soft, light grip. That's all I keep hearing. I mean, it makes me want to throw up. All right? And what do I say? The grip should be relatively firm like a good, solid business handshake. If you had a scale of one to five, one is holding it like a dead fish, five is like squeezing your eyeballs out. You want to hold it like a three right in the middle. But here's the other critical thing about the grip. It must be relatively firm and both hands must be equal. All right, equal pressure. Now the whole world tells you if you're a right-hander, which is, use your right hand, which is your bottom hand, which if you're a left-hander, playing left-hander would be your left hand and the bottom hand. If you're lower hand on the club, they tell you that's a no good hand. It does nothing but problems. You don't need it, don't use it. And, and they try to tell you the whole swing is basically all the forward arm and hand. Garbage. There's a law of physics that states, it's a law of physics called drag. If two or more things are involved in a swinging of an object, in the movement of an object, which would be two hands moving a golf club, if they are not equal in everything you want, firmness of holding the grip, the speeds the, that they're moving, that they're swinging at, if they are not equal, then the one putting lesser than the greater, and in terms of what we just talked about, they're telling you not to use your lower hand, right for righty, left for lefty, if they are not equal, then the one doing lesser than the greater is putting that system into drag, and drag is a negative effect. Just think about a car. If you jump in your car and your front left wheel 
Oh, let's take it the right wheel since I'm right-handed. We'll talk from that standpoint. If the right wheel starts dragging and uh, the brake starts dragging the car or whatever, and that wheel's turning less at, at, a, at, a, less, at a slower rate than the, than the left wheel, the car is going to turn in a circle to the right. Okay, the same thing happens in golf. I use the concept of ringing a bell. When I was a young boy and I was an altar boy, they set me up there to ring the big church bell. When I put both hands on that bell to get ready to pull it, I put them up there, and when I got ready to pull it, when I squeezed, I squeezed both hands equally, the same pressure, and when I pulled down, it, I pulled them both down at the same force, the same speed, the same energy, and when that church bell recalled back up and jerked me up, it jerked, it jerked up both of my hands and arms and my entire body all up at the same speed. Same thing with a golf club. You must have equal, relatively firm and equal grip pressure. Now, relatively firm is different for everybody. But it's relatively firm. One of the things I do in all the golf schools now, in private lessons, I usually check someone's grip pressure. I say, okay, grip the club, and tell me when you set your grip pressure, your arm and gri your, your grip pressure for your hands up to your forearms, and I stand in front of them, and I put my hand down up in the air, and I say, lift the club up, and put it in my hand, and then I do a little twist like this. And I'll bet you three quarters of the people, when I do that twist, the club just twists in their hands. They got it that light with both hands, never mind just the right. Sometimes I can see... I can see that the, that they got a little more with the left, but the right the, the, the right hand's just on there like they're holding on to something that that's a they just pulled a hot poker out of the fire and they, and they they can't hold on to it. They have to be equal. So I want to expound on this point. Grip pressure has to be relatively firm and equal in both hands, in the firmness and the speed in which we swing both hands, trying to swing the same speed because we don't want the law of drag coming in and messing up our golf swing. And drag is a negative effect. So when you get that equal grip pressure and you, and you try to swing the hands equally, keeping them firm enough where, where I get a little tug on it, I don't want it so firm where I, I feel a lot of pressure in my wrist, but I want it relatively firm that it doesn't twist and it doesn't slide out of your hands if I jerk it. We got that relatively firm, number three on a one to five scale of grip pressure. And you stand in here and you control your golf club and you'll be hitting it more solid straight, keeping it in play more consistently and likely shooting those lower scores. That's it for the first search today on talking about constant, equal, relatively firm grip pressure. I must swing the club. The club does not swing me. So that means you've got to control it with good grip pressure to control the club, to hit good shots, and shoot those lower scores. That's it for today, and I'll be speaking with you all again soon.